Good morning, saints. I'm glad you could join us this morning online. Uh, just want to let you know that uh, this is the second Sunday we are only doing online services, but next Sunday we are going to be in person. So come and join us next Sunday morning. If you'll open up your Bibles this morning to John chapter 21. We're continuing our series, Encounters with Jesus. Pray with me if you would. Father in heaven, we are thankful <clears throat> for this morning, for the opportunity, Lord, to open your word. Lord, we're thankful that you encountered people, that we read stories about your encountering different lives. And Lord, you're still in the same business of doing that today. Lord, you want to encounter with us. You want to meet with us. So Lord, this morning as we open your word, I pray, Father, that you would speak to our hearts. Lord, may we have ears to hear what your Holy Spirit has to say to us. In your name we pray. Amen. John chapter 21, this is a post-resurrection, pre-ascension encounter of Jesus and his disciples. Let me give you just a little bit of background. So Jesus has been raised from the dead and he has had several encounters with his disciples. In John 21, in verse 3... Peter and some of the other disciples, Peter says, I'm going fishing. Now, when I read that, I think Peter is a little bit uh, depressed and defeated. I think he's disillusioned just of all the previous events that happened when he denied the Lord and when the Lord was crucified and he says, I'm going fishing. And some of his fishing buddies says, we're going with you. He says, they went out and they fished all night and caught nothing. Now, that would be depressing enough if you've been a commercial fisherman all your life and you went out and you caught nothing. And so, as they're out in the boat, it says in verse 5 of John 21, let's just pick up the story there. Actually, we'll start in verse 4. But when the day was now breaking, Jesus stood on the beach, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus therefore said to them, children, you do not have any fish, do you? They answered him, no, and he said, cast your net on the other side of the boat, and I think you'll catch fish. And so they cast their net out, and immediately they had a, a net full of fish. And John says, it's the Lord. And Peter immediately, because he, he, he had uh, taken off. I guess when he was fishing, he didn't want to get his outer garment dirty, so he took it off. It says he, he put on his outer garment because he was stripped down. He put on his outer garment, jumped out of the boat, and swam to shore. And the rest of, the, the rest of his fishing buddies, they all oared to shore. And here is Jesus. They see a fire. They see fish and bread. And he says... Come here, let's eat breakfast. And none of them says, they didn't say, they didn't ask him, are you the Lord? They all knew who he was. And so he, he feeds breakfast to his disciples. And then Jesus begins a conversation with Peter. And I want to pick up there in verse 15. Jesus says to Peter, he says, Peter... Do you love me more than these? And Peter says, 
Lord, you know I love you more than these. And Jesus says, Peter, shepherd my sheep. Jesus said to Peter a second time, he says, Peter, do you love me? Peter says, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus says, take care of my sheep. And again, a third time in verse 17, and Jesus said to Peter a third time, Simon Peter, son of John, do you love me? It says Peter was grieved because he said to him, do you love me? And Peter says, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And I think that had the sting to Peter because how many times did Jesus ask him if he loved him? Three times. The same number of times that Peter denied the Lord. And I tell you, there's a tenderness to me there from the Lord when Peter says, Lord, you know I love you. Pete, the Lord didn't come back and say, well, if you love me, why did you deny me after your high and mighty proclamation that you said, I'll follow you, Lord, to the death. If they send us to prison, I'll go with you. The Lord didn't respond like that. And we're going to, what I want us to focus on this morning now is verses 18 through 22. So he, Peter and Jesus have had this little conversation about, do you love me, Peter? In verse 18, the Lord goes on and he says to Peter, he says, Peter, truly, truly, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to gird yourself and walk wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will gird you and bring you where you do not wish to go. Now this, Jesus said, signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when Jesus had spoken this, he said to Peter, follow me. Peter, turning around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. The one who also had leaned back on his breast at the supper and says, Lord, who is it, the one who betrays you? Peter, therefore, seeing him said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? And Jesus said to him, if I want him to remain until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. When Jesus told Peter, he says, Peter, he says, when you you get up and you get dressed and you go wherever you want. But one of these days when you grow old, someone else is going to dress you and they're going to take you where you don't want. And it says that was, that was the Lord's way of signifying by what kind of death he was going to die and glorify God. That must have rattled Peter's cage somewhat because immediately Peter says something that is so ingrained in human nature. When the Lord says to Peter, this is what's going to happen to you, immediately Peter says, Lord, what about him? What's going to happen to him? That is so typical of you and I. Uh, and yet, what does the Lord say to Peter? He says, Peter, he says, that's none of your business. You follow me. So this morning, I want you and I to look at this story. And we're going to put ourselves in it. We're often, so often like Peter, we always are like, Lord, what about them? And the Lord's word to you and I this morning is, you follow me. So I want to look at that command, you follow me, irregardless of three things. One, our lot in life. Two, the cross we bear. And three, the race we run. 
The Lord says to you and I, first off, to follow him, irregardless of our lot in life. If you have your Bibles, turn to Exodus chapter 4, verse 11. And this is actually when the Lord called Moses. And he says, Moses, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use you to deliver the children of Israel out of the bondage of, and slavery of Egypt. And in verse 10, then Moses said to the Lord, please, Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither recently nor in times past, nor since you have spoken to your servant, for I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. And the Lord said to Moses, who makes man's mouth or who makes him dumb or deaf or seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? You and I are called to follow him irregardless of our lot in life. Some of us are short, tall, thin, not so thin. All of our hair colors are different. Some of us have more hair. Some of us have less. And our lot in life, every one of us is different. Now, Seth Halford is part polar bear. I, he told me he never turns on his furnace in his house. All winter long. I have never seen him wear a winter coat. Now, me on the other hand, when I think about cold weather, I get cold just by thinking about it. I have at home, I have a heating pad that I set beside my lazy boy chair and there are many, many days that I sit there with that heating pad on about number three, just trying to stay warm. You see, we're all wired and made differently. Our lot in life is all differently. Now, I don't, know, I don't understand why Seth, I mean, he's got a built-in heater that is just phenomenal. I work outside in the winter. I don't know why I didn't get, I don't know why I didn't inherit one of those myself. Because I can put on my insulated underwear at 55 degrees and be real comfortable. I'm not hot at all. I don't understand why he gets the heat and I don't. Do you know? Do you know what the Lord says to you, Scott? What is that to you? You follow me. For every one of us, our, our lot in life, not all of us were born Sam Walton's son or any of his descendants. Some of us might struggle financially and we've struggled financially for a long long time in our life and and we we want to do lord how come i'm not like and do you know what the lord says to you and i what is that to you you follow me we compare and the lord says you follow me Secondly, the Lord's command to you and I this morning is to follow me irregardless of the cross that we bear. Mark chapter 8, verse 34, Jesus says, If any man is willing, let him deny himself, take up his cross. And follow me. I remember when Lan and I were first married. We wanted kiddos something fierce. And it wasn't happening. 
And we had numerous friends that were very prolific at having kids. And we couldn't have any. Mother's Day Sunday had a real sting to it. Because our quiver was empty. We finally went through some medical tests and found out that we weren't going to have kids. Now that is a cross. That was a cross that we were going to have to bear. Now the Lord... The Lord provided other ways. We have two wonderful sons. We love them both. He just went about it a different way. We were able to adopt both our sons. I'm grateful for both of them. But you see, that was a cross for Lan and I. That was a death of of a dream, of a hope, of a desire. Some of you have very heavy crosses to bear. Again, just talking about Moses. I don't know if you remember. In Exodus 17, this is after after the Lord used Moses to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. They're wandering around in the wilderness. And in Exodus 17, they don't have any water. And the children of Israel begin to grumble and complain to Moses and say, Moses, we're thirsty. You brought us out here in the desert and us and all our animals are going to die of thirst. And Moses goes to the Lord and the Lord says to Moses, Moses, take your stick, your rod, and go to this rock and I want you to Hit it. Moses, he took his stick, he went to the rock, he hit it, and out come out the water. The Lord provided water for the children of Israel. Later on, and this is actually in Numbers, the first instance is in Exodus 17. The second instance is in Numbers chapter 20. Same song, second verse. The children of Israel are wandering around in the wilderness. And they're really mad at Moses. And again, they're thirsty. And the Lord said, Moses, I want you to go to this rock. And I want you to speak to it. That the water would come out. Moses takes some of the leaders of the children of Israel. And he must have been about fed up to hear with them. I mean, he was frustrated. So he goes to the rock and he takes his stick. And the Bible says he, he, it's almost like he lost. I mean, he was mad. It says he took his stick and he hit the rock twice. And he says, you bunch of rebels, here's water for you. You know what happened? Water came out of the rock. But the Lord said to Moses, he says, Moses, he says, because you didn't regard me as holy and treat, you didn't obey and do what I say. You're not going to enter the promised land. There's a, there's a couple of little verses in Deuteronomy which just shows to me the pain of the cross that, that Moses had to bear. This is the children of Israel getting ready to cross into the promised land. They're finally going to realize their deliverance from Egypt. They're finally going to enter into the promised land. And this is in Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse tw- starting in verse 23. And this is Moses talking. He says, I also pleaded with the Lord at that time, saying, O oh Lord God, you have begun to show your servant your greatness and your strong hand. 
For what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do such works and mighty acts as yours? Let me, I pray, cross over and see the fair land that is beyond the Jordan, that good hill country in Lebanon. Listen to this. This is verse 26. But the Lord was angry with me on your account and would not listen to me. The Lord said to me, enough. Speak to me no more about this matter. You think about Moses all these years that the Lord had used him. First off, to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. And then he put up with all their grumblings and complainings. And he saw the hand of the Lord provide for them. And they're finally going to realize the promise. And he's like, Lord, let me just go in. And the Lord says, no. Don't even talk to me anymore about this. That was a cross for him to bear. What is a cross? Well, it's an instrument of death. That's what a cross is. And for some of us this morning, it may be the death of a dream. It may be the death of a goal or an ambition. It may be a heart cry. It may be the death of a person or a family member. And all of those can be a stumbling block. All of those can be so heavy to bear. And yet, do you know what the Lord says to you and I? He says, follow me. Irregardless of the cross that you bear, he says, follow me. So you and I are are commanded by the Lord to follow him, irregardless of our lot in life, irregardless of the cross we bear, but also irregardless of the race that is set before us. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you may not grow weary and lose heart. Brothers and sisters, for each one of us, yes, we're all following Jesus, but our race is different. Hebrews says, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. The race that is before me looks different than your race. It says in Hebrews, it says, let us lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily besets us. For every one of us, you and I, We struggle with different things. My encumbrances and my sins are different than yours. Maybe yours, maybe it's alcohol, maybe it's drugs, maybe it's pornography, maybe it's gossip. Maybe you struggle with gossip and slander. Maybe you struggle with the love of money. They're all different for each one of us.
And you and I have to deal with those because what does it say in Hebrews? It says, let us lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us. We have to deal with those struggles. But the Lord says to you and I, in the midst of all of those, do you know what he says? You follow me. I remember when my boys Luke and Austin were at home and lots younger, Luke was always more concerned with Austin's struggles than with mine. Luke was always more concerned with Austin's struggles than with his own. Austin was always more concerned with Luke's problems than his own. And we used to do this little thing. I used to put my hands here like a circle and I'd say, Luke, you see this little circle? I said, Every th everything that pertains to your life is in that circle. And you know what you need to focus on? You need to focus on this circle because this is yours. Austin has a circle too with his problems and his struggles. He needs to focus on those. It's so easy for you and I. I want to focus on someone else's struggles. I want to focus on someone else's encumbrances. And do you know what the Lord says? Scott, see this circle? This is your circle. You focus on that. For you and I this morning, As you and I put ourselves in John chapter 21. And the Lord says to you and I. Follow me. Sometimes we get hung up. On our lot in life and we say Lord I. How come I can't be like so-and-so? Why is my life so different? Why do I have to deal with this? And what does he say? You follow me. Sometimes the cross that we bear and like I shared, some of you here, we, we bear heavy crosses. And yet the Lord, what does he say? He says, you follow me. Sometimes the race that is set before us and those encumbrances and those struggles and those sins which so easily beset us that try to get us to quit the race, what does the Lord say to you and I this morning? He says, you follow me. Now I want to give you perspective as I close In verse 19 of John 21, after the Lord said to Peter, he says, Truly I say to you, when you were younger, you used to gird yourself and walk wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will gird you and bring you where you do not wish to go. Listen to verse 19. Now this Jesus said... <clears throat> signifying by what kind of death Peter would glorify God. And when he had said this, the Lord said to Peter, follow me. Brothers and sisters, 
That's the bottom line. The bottom line is irregardless of your lot in life, irregardless of the cross that you bear, irregardless of the race that you run, the bottom line is to glorify God in whatever it is. It's no different for you and I. The struggles that you and I have. We need to see from the eternal perspective. That the Lord may use those. To glorify him. Now if our focus is always on. Well what about him? We lose sight of our. We lose sight of the ultimate goal. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 1, verse 3 through 4, he says, When the Lord comforts you in your affliction, you are able to comfort those who may share in the same affliction that you have. So what you're going through today in your lot in life, or the cross that you bear, or the race that you run, remember this. The comfort that you receive from the Lord as you follow Him, the Lord's going to use you to comfort someone else in that same affliction. Because we're all different. The cross that I bear, the race that I run, my lot in life is different than yours. The people that you're going to be able to comfort with the comfort that you've received from the Lord, I may never be able to reach them or touch them or speak into their life. Why? Because I've not walked in your shoes. I've not, I've, not, I've not run the race that you've run. I've not bore the cross that you bore. But you have. And the comfort that you've received from the Lord as you've walked through that, guess what? You become the hands and the feet of Jesus to someone. One of my favorite verses in Psalms 84, 6. We'll start in verse 5. How blessed is the man whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. Passing through the valley of weeping, they make it a spring. Passing through the valley of weeping, they make it a spring. Passing through that valley of sorrow, and trouble, and distress, and brokenness, they turn it into a spring. What's a spring? It's a source of refreshment, cleansing, life, healing, wholeness for you and I again. The cross that you bear, your lot in life, the race that you run, As you walk through some of those areas that are a, like a valley of weeping, a valley of sorrow, do you know what? Turn it into a spring. Turn it into something that brings healing and restoration to someone else. First Corinthians 10 verse 3 says, whether then we eat or drink or whatever we do, do all to the glory of God. So irregardless of your lot in life, irregardless of the cross that you bear, irregardless of the race that you run, 
first off, remember, it's to glorify the Lord. And that changes my perspective. If, if, I, if I know that what I'm going through, there is a purpose, that the Lord is going to use it, that changes my whole focus. So we, regardless of the, our lot in life, the cross we bear, the race that we run, remember, the Lord's going to use those areas for you to be a comfort to others. He wants you to use those to be a source of life in other people's lives. Because there are going to be people, there are going to be people that you and I, as, as the congregation of New Life, that Pastor Justin will never be able to reach. But you will, because you've walked it. Because you, that, when somebody says, man, my lot in life stinks, or the, the things that I'm going through, the crosses that I bear, or this is what's, this is, these are the things I'm struggling with. You can say, been there, done that. I have the t-shirt. And the Lord's comforted me. Let me help you. So for you and I this morning, the word of the Lord to you and I is, you follow me.